Here's a good example of the Gruby Faience mark. It's larger than, and earlier than the Gruby Pottery mark. Almost all the scarabs have the Faience mark. A quarter fits in the center of the mark. So sometimes when it's not even legible, you can tell which mark it is by the size. This is one of the best examples of the pottery mark I've had on a piece. A quarter covers it almost completely. This has a date, January 11th, 1907. 1907 is the first year they used the Gruby pottery mark. This piece is marked SM, modeler's initials. Oftentimes, no marks are visible on the bottom of the piece. Sometimes you can just see the size of the, uh, of the circular mark. Here, the, the pot stuck to the shelf in the kiln. You can see a slight impression of groupie, the word groupie right here. This also is a faience mark. I can see the F, so, and, it, and the mark is larger. This one has a modeler's initial but really no visible groupie mark. They were not considered artists. They were called modelers by the company. Modeling implied sculpting in clay. What's more important in assessing a piece of groupie is how well it came out of the kiln. William Grubie was the principal glaze technician. And he had a huge variety of green and other colored glazes. This veining they called crackle and was a desirable aspect of the glaze. In this example there's no run whatsoever over the over the the buds. The leaf edges are strong even though the glaze is very thick and heavily curdled. This is remarkable curdling to the glaze. Another interesting thing is where do the leaves stop? In this example, the leaves poke up over the edge and have a really, really curl out. Here's an example where the leaf tip curls over an extreme and actually folds back on itself. Here's another example of a different type of leaf tip curl. The Groupie Fayance Company was incorporated in 1894 and was in existence until 1909. There was some overlap with the Groupie Pottery Company, which began in 1907 and lasted until 1909 as well, when both companies went into receivership. The final sale of the pottery was held in 1910. But within a few months of the company going into receivership, a new company was formed called the Groupie Fayance and Tile Company. This lasted until the company was sold in 1919 to the CPARD Works in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. 